mender of broken hearts, oh God. We thank you, oh God. You lift up our heads, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for restoring those who have been cast down, trodden upon. God, we thank you. We bless you, oh God. We bless you, oh God, because you are worthy to be praised. You are God and God alone. And God, for that, we say thank you. God, we say thank you on this morning, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for renewing our minds on this morning, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that we've come as a body of believers, oh God, with one mind and on one accord to lift up your name, oh God, to praise you, oh God, to give you the honor that is due unto you. God, we acknowledge you on today. Guide our feet, oh God, as we walk. Anoint our mouths as we speak and as we sing praises to your name, oh God. God, let your spirit dwell among your people on today. Rest, rule, and abide in this place, oh God. Have your way. God, have your way. Do what you want to do, God. Minister to your people right where they need you, oh God. God, we stand in need on this morning. We acknowledge, God, that we can do nothing without you. Have your way in this place. Saturate us with your presence, oh God. God, we are your humble servants. We yield to you on this morning, oh God. Do what you want to do in us, oh God. Send revival in this place, oh God. Set our souls and our spirits on fire, oh God, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. God, let your word come forth on today with power and authority and conviction, oh God, that your people might, oh God, turn their hearts to you. God, give us a heart of repentance. Help us, oh God, to see our, our ways that are not like you. Help us, oh God, to surrender our wills unto yours. Do a new thing in us, oh God. Creating us a clean heart and renewing us a right spirit, God. Touch us now, God. Help us, oh God, to choose you on today. God, today we make a decision to follow you. God, those who may not know you, those who don't have relationship with you. God, we pray that something is said or done on today, oh God, that would touch their hearts, oh God. That would have them to call out to you, oh God. To say, God, I need you. I don't know where else to turn, God. I need you. Send someone, oh God, that would minister salvation to them on today, oh God. And Father, we thank you. And we honor you. And we count it done in Jesus' name. And God, it's for your glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you on this morning. We thank you, oh God, for the souls that are coming. We stand in expectation, God. Hallelujah. Our scripture on this morning will be coming from Psalm 1. Hallelujah. Do we have any blessed people in the building on this morning? Hallelujah. I consider myself to be blessed. I'm standing here on this morning. We are a blessed people. Despite what some have called us, and we've been called many names, but we are blessed on this morning. Hallelujah. And the scripture reads, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and the night and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that he bring it that bring it forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither 
and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. At this time, our praise and worship team is coming to bring forth songs unto him. We pray that you would, O oh God, receive them in Jesus' name. everybody hallelujah we give God glory and honor for another day we thank him for being our God our King our maker and our Savior thank you for waking us up this morning touching our bodies touching our minds anybody else grateful on this morning you're glad that you're here hallelujah hallelujah not just because it's tradition to come to church but because you were glad that they, when they said unto you, come on, let's go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know and you understand that here is where you can um, reach God. Here is a place where you can be replenished and you can be refilled and restored. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that God is God all by himself. I'm glad because he has us in need to counsel with us concerning the plans that he has for us. Hallelujah. Anybody else grateful? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You made it through another week. Hallelujah. It may have been tough for some and may have been easy for others, but you made it. Regardless of the situation, God brought you through it. Come on, will you slip your hands up? Clap your hands for the Lord. Thank you for one more chance to give you glory. One more opportunity to bless your name. Hallelujah, we're so grateful today. Hallelujah, God, we will call on your name because you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, we will call on your name because you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, and we know, we understand, and we have the confidence that you will hear us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When I cry, God hears me. Hallelujah, in my distress, he will answer. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Anybody else believe that on today? He is a prayer answering God. Yes, he is. He's a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, with us call on the name of Jesus in here. Call on the name of Jesus. Come on, call his name. Call his name. Call his name. Hallelujah. We call you Jesus. We call you Savior. We call you Healer. We call you Deliverer. We call you Friend. We call you Prayer Answer. Prayer Answerer. Excuse me. Hallelujah. But we call on His name. That name is great. That name is worthy. Yes, sir. I said that name is worthy. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Oh, my God. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. I will call on the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. 
Hallelujah.
Yes, God. We love you, Jesus. He is our God. He's our King. He is Lord over our lives. Hallelujah. We look to him for everything. He is our source. Yes. He is our source. Everything that we need, we can find it in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Old folks used to say, all that I need is in Jesus. He satisfies and joy he supplies. Hallelujah. Come on, we can slip your hands up. And just begin to offer up worship unto the Lord. Come on, will you say something lovely? Say something to him. Hallelujah. You're so awesome. You're so worthy. You're so excellent. There is no failure in you, oh God. We thank you for covering and for keeping us. Come on, talk to him. Let him hear your voice. Let him hear your voice. How beautiful you are. sweet name <laughs> what a powerful name <laughs> what a great name oh, Feel this place. Somebody is here today, oh God, and they need you to show up today. Tomorrow will be too late. And we know that you are an on time God. Mm. Hey, somebody needs you to answer a prayer and fulfill provide a, re, a resource on today, God, before they leave this building. God, we know that you can. We know that you will. Hallelujah.
Come on, put those hands together for the name that is matchless, 
undefeated, undisputed, accomplishes everything that we couldn't do for ourselves. Somebody say, there's no other name given. Well, by men might be saved. We thank God, amen, for the presence of the Lord that is in this place. One more time, let's give the presence of the Lord our standing, sitting, ovation. If you're online, give him the best praise that you have for his consistent goodness. We stand in awe of him. His ways are mind-boggling. Come on, somebody. How good he is to those who don't deserve it. Somebody say, he's treating me better than I deserve. Look at your neighbor and say, tell your neighbor, he's treating me. Go ahead and let it out. Let the cat out the bag. Because they might think a little bit more highly of you than they ought to be thinking. Say, he's treating me better than what I deserve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of our righteousness, collectively, piled together, is as filthy rags. But he says it's with loving kindness that he continues to finish what he has initiated. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, hallelujah. Hey, boss, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be in the land of the living. And I'm glad to be in my right mind. To know that I rose this morning with new mercies. And it was his spirit that gave me the nudge. Get up, boy. There's something else for you to experience. Something else for you to do. Somebody say, thank God that he gave you a nudge. And to those of us that have made our way here to the house of God and to those that's online, we come to lift his name up. For he said that if I be lifted up, that he would do what? He would draw all men. Somebody said, that includes me unto himself hallelujah we thank you for being a part of this worship experience of giving him what he is worthy of on the first day of this week this Sunday that we celebrate amen what the Lord has done past present and our expectation of our latter being better somebody say future because he's a good God let us put our hands together for our minstrels, amen, who continue to render their gifts to help make the atmosphere conducive and to you being an instrument of praise yielding, amen, to our Holy Father and obedient Son in Jesus the Christ. Who loves the Word? I love the Word. And we're going to be coming out of an Old Testament, Joshua chapter 24, starting at verses 14 through 22, very familiar passage of scripture. And we're going to hear what the Lord will have to say to his church. But there are a number of us in here that are wearing pink in acknowledgement of it. Come on, somebody. Our God is a, a yeah, breast cancer awareness month, but I'm going to tell you, our God is a healer. Come on, somebody. I know, I know, I know, but every strike that he endured, it's not that he came. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, he does it. And I thank God for the evidence that's in this house. Can somebody say amen? I thank God for the man of God and for the woman of God. And Bishop Carolyn Hardison, come on, put your hands together. Somebody say overcomers. We thank God for Apostle Roosevelt. Somebody say overcomers. And we thank God for those who have went to sleep in the Lord. Somebody say overcomers. 
We thank God for Sister Hopkins. Amen. Put your hands together. For we overcome by the finished works of Jesus Christ. We thank God for, amen, for Deacon Wright, an overcomer in the Lord. We put our hands together for what the Lord is doing. But when you have the word of God, say amen. Joshua 24, starting at verse 14. Joshua 24, starting at verse 14. I'm reading out of, out of the New American Standard Version. I do apologize that I did not get my scriptures to the AV department, but I know you came with your Bibles. Amen. Joshua chapter 24, starting at verse 14, here reads the reading of God's word. And the Bible says, now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. And put away the gods which your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served which were beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. Now the response of the people, they simply answered this and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and who did these great signs in our sight to preserve us through all the way in which we went and among all the people through whose midst we passed. The Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites who lived in the land. We also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The response from Joshua was this. Joshua said to the people, you will not be able to serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God, and he will not forgive your transgressions or your sins if you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods. Then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after he has done good to you. The people said to Joshua, no, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen for yourselves the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. Father, we thank you, God, for what you have granted. We thank you that your word is already blessed. We give you our undivided attention. We crucify our flesh. Speak to our spirit, man, spirit to spirit. Feed us, O oh God, this bread from heaven. Your word lives in us. It leads, guides, corrects, edifies, heals. Do it, Lord, by your spirit and by your power. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You be glorified, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. It is in Jesus Christ's name we all say amen. Look at your neighbor as the lights come on and just simply say this, choose wisely. Choose wisely. The choice is yours. Choose wisely. Sometimes to get what the Bible says that we need to get. The Bible says, in all that get and get understanding. Sometimes he allows me, I believe, and pray for me, because I believe he's a merciful God, to utilize things that we can relate to that was B.C., before Christ, when we was out there. Sometimes I use songs. Some of them are R&B, some are rap, some are to, to do whatever needs to be done. 
But I remember there was a rap song, and there was a hook that was in the rap song that said this, you can get with this, or you can get with that. <laughs> the point is, you have a choice. He says, I lay before you life and death, blessings and cursings. He says, choose life. The point is, you have a choice. Here we find Joshua, who is the character or the person that we're going to deal with today, who is the mentee of Moses. And Moses had finished his course, but now Joshua in this book is doing his farewell, but he is bringing them back to a particular place. Sometimes we need to reflect to go back to anchor ourselves because if not careful, we can get off center. You know how the scripture says you did run well, but who did to hinder you that you obey not the truth? See, sometimes we can get off. The scripture also says we all like sheep have what gone astray. Sometimes we can get off. I'm reminded of a movie back in the days. It was a series of movies. Do y'all remember the Indiana Jones series of movies? I remember one of the movies, Indiana Jones, the primary character, was looking for what was called the Holy Grail. And when he and his team finally arrived at the site where it was located, he had to go through a number of tests. Somebody say, sounds like my journey. He had to go through a number of tests to get to a specific room where it actually rested. And he weathered, somebody say death. If we could really see what's going on in the spiritual realm, the higher the plots, the plans, the strategies, the attacks of the enemy, if we can see what, what, what the angelic hosts are doing on, on our behalf, the head's just about you. Come on, somebody. Do you know how many skin, just for you to get to the house of God, how many cars and demons could, that the enemy would have wanted to have ran into your vehicle at 80 miles per hour. Come on, somebody. But however, God said not so. Yes, Lord. But he had to weather death and he had, he, he had to spell the name Jehovah correctly in Latin. Do y'all remember the movie? And he had to take steps of faith across a deep precipice. You know how it was. Indiana Jones, he, was, he had his whip. But he was in pursuit of the Holy Grail. But finally making it through the test successfully, he came into a room with an assortment of cups and he was faced with the challenge of having to choose which one belonged to the carpenter from Nazareth. Not only did he get through all the tests, he gets there to this particular location, but his enemies are pursuing him only to wind up in the same area or room in the movie. And there was a guardian knight that was there, and the guardian knight said that, that the person who chose the cup must choose carefully. Somebody said, you got to choose carefully. Don't move in your emotion. Don't move in your impulse. Don't move in any outside stimuli. Somebody said, sometimes we need to stand still and see the salvation. Sometimes we need to be slow to speak and swift to hear. Somebody say, choose carefully. I was coaching my girls yesterday in practice, and our last game, we haven't won. We lost the first two games. The first game, we lost by 30 points. The next game, we, Higgin, we lost by, ten, by six, by six points. Higgin, we're building, because I told them, I told the young ladies, I said, look, Higgin, we're going to be ascending. Whatever our best, however our best look, by the end of the year, we're going to be there, individually as well as a group. And I told them the first game, everything that you can bring to any challenge, to any competition, is effort. Your shot might be off. You might not run this fast this game or whatever. But one thing you can always bring is effort. And from that platform, we build. The second game, not only did the girls come with even more effort, they began to score. Janae hit her first basket. Come on, somebody. I saw them even... Though the scoreboard wasn't favorable for us, I saw them looking at one another, encouraging one another, able to line up and look at their opponent and walk across there with their head up. That we, look, look, we did our best. Maybe next time. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, maybe you might not win all of them, but there's victories even in the losses. Yes, Lord. But it says... This guardian says that whoever chooses, he says, to choose carefully. 
In fact, this is exactly what he said because the reason why he tells us to choose wisely, there's always consequences tied to our choices. Come on, somebody. It's how we learn. The Bible says that he chastises those that he loves. Who loves to be disciplined? But however, if we endure the discipline, he'll deal with us as sons and we will yield more. Someone say it's better on the back end when we go through the chastisement. Of the, it, it's a form of love. Someone said we talked last week about a love language. If he doesn't chastise, if we don't endure, then, then there's no love there. The Bible says faithful are the woundings of a friend. And sometimes when people tell us the truth, it don't feel so good. A couple of weeks ago, I had a kidney stone. Y'all prayed and God caused that thing to dissolve, to go somewhere. The only thing I know that God answered one of y'all's prayers or somebody prayed. I'm so glad that somebody could get a prayer through. It might have been you. But, I, but my mama called and after that Sunday morning service and my wife preached and, he got, and I got uh, my aunt from California called and people calling from everywhere. After she got up and y'all shouted and y'all y'all prayed. Um, are you all right? I'm fine. I, I heard, heard your wife. By the way, she preached on that. She preached. Now. But by the way, are you all right? <laughs> Someone say, thank God for help. Thank God for somebody who genuinely cares. Amen. But that thing dried up. It's, I haven't had no pain like that in my right kidney ever in my life. But thank God for the dissolving of answered prayer. I told you. Elder Christian, I said, I don't wish that on my enemy. The only person who can I, I would give that to is the devil. Give it to him. Amen, but whew, newfound respect for mothers. Yeah. Amen. Okay. But somebody said you got to choose wisely. Because the one that was going to choose, if you chose the wrong cup, you chose death. But if you chose the right cup, you chose death. Life. You remember Jesus put it this way in John 10 and 10. He says, the thief cometh not before to steal, to kill, or to destroy. But Jesus said, but I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. If you, have y'all been paying attention to the news that Russia is threatening nuclear war? And he got our leaders talking about, you go ahead and you jump if you want to. Come on, somebody. Think about how things are fulfilling itself. I don't believe that it's time for the church to panic because when we read our word, we, underthink, we understand that things are unfolding. If anything, it should give us a sense of urgency to get this good news, this gospel out, that we stop being, some I say, so self-centered, but that I eat this word, that I taste and see that this word is good, and then in turn, I turn and I share the word. I get it to my family, my friends, because let me tell you something. Jesus is soon to come. Everything is fulfilling itself. Little petty stuff we can't be distracted by anymore. And, come on, somebody. We can't be distracted by the accumulation of things. Things come. Somebody say things come. Everything that we need to fulfill our kingdom assignment, God is going to flip the bill so we don't run after things. Things run after us. He said that if you be willing and obedient that you'll eat the good, of the land. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm somebody because I'm in Christ. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, you lost. You can't be good enough. You can't pay enough money. You can't dance enough. You can't sing enough. You can't rub elbows with, 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 with all the famous people in the world. And he says, you know, you just come on in. He goes, you didn't do this or you didn't do that. No, you got to put your faith in the one that is faithful, the one that came born of a woman, tempted in every way, but yet without sin, he passed every test that you and I failed. But if you take your faith and put it in him, Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, he is the way, the truth, and the life. You can't go wrong with Jesus. You can't go wrong with Jesus. He's undefeated, undisputed, can't fail. We can forgive any and all. If we come, we confess, and we repent of our sin. 
and receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and for the remaining of the days that God has granted us, amen, to live a spirit-led life that is a victorious life, an overcoming life, a life where we are dependent. We are sheep of his pasture. We are children of God. We have authority. We have power. We have resources. We have everything that we need, amen, to continue to finish works of Jesus Christ into what's next. Somebody said, you got a choice to make. With all of this stimuli through programming, through entertainment, through the, the spiritual warfare of offense, it's so amazing how sensitive we can be. Well, God has made it clear on what his expectation is of us. He says, be you holy for, my, for I'm holy. He says, forgive that you can be forgiven. He makes it clear, it's plain. A babe understands it. But it's a hard thing because our flesh don't want it. But we have to buffet our body. Anytime that our flesh don't want to do something, right then we need to tie that, tie that thing to the altar. This is the way that I need to go, spiritually. Because somehow you don't want to do this thing. Can somebody say amen? So either you're going to choose death, but choosing the right cup will lead him or lead you to life. Joshua's uh, mentor and Moses said it this way. He said, choose likely because within the covenant of God, there are blessings and curses. I know we don't like to talk about that, but, but the fact of the matter is, it's the truth. I don't believe that God wants us to walk around with a black cloud behind us, but we have to understand also, think of that, that we reap what we sow. Can somebody say amen? I'd rather fall into the hands of a merciful God than a people. Somebody say amen. Because sometimes we get selective memory. We forget what we did. I'm sorry. Overseer Roosevelt. I don't got no rocks in my pocket. Okay, I'm good. Amen. Look at your name. Say, I know you don't got no rocks in your pocket, do you? He that is without cast. And the Bible says that he left from the eldest to the youngest. But Joshua chapter 24, let's go back and look at this a little bit and walk through it. And the Bible says that now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him with, some say, sincerity and truth. And remember this, God is not concerned about performance. We can't entertain God. He wants your heart. See, we can entertain one another. In fact, we can put on fronts and we can, we can actually look like a role. We can be hypocritical. This is what the scripture says. We can have the form of godliness, but deny the power. We can, we, we, we can know all the church slain. We can know how to put the words together. We can even know how to take our tongues and make it so sound like we just, just fell out of the throne room. Come on, somebody. But remember this, God is like, not like man. Where man looks at the external, but God looks at the heart. The Bible says that David was a man after his own heart. He was a man that was quick to repent. God wants your heart. If he has your heart, he has you. See, because when, when, when we miss it, for the scripture says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I'm not saying that it's licensed to sin, for the scripture says that, that should we continue in sin, that grace may abound. He says, God forbid. Should we take grace and just live recklessly, less seriously? No. But when I love him, I have a desire within myself to please him, to want to put a smile on his face. It is, I find strength when he is pleased. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm able to go on. I'm able to do what it is that he has commissioned and called and equipped us to do when I know that he's pleased. And sometimes that's the only strength that you're going to have because sometimes God will give you an assignment that he doesn't give nobody else the memo. I don't know if you've ever been there where God would tell you to do a particular thing. He doesn't tell nobody else. and They're looking at you crazy and they give you all types of counsel. Think of why you're doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. That's the wrong way to do it. And the only thing that you can say is but. And then when they put you up under the light bulb and interrogate you why you're doing it. They're going through your thoughts and everything. You can't even explain it but God because his sheep know his voice and a stranger when he got your heart a stranger they won't follow 
But I love that Joshua is having this account, and he says that serve him with sincerity and with truth and put away the gods which your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. See, he talks about the influences that they have. The most influential people should be early on is our parents. Am I right about it? If your parents speak Spanish, more than likely, you're going to speak Spanish. If your parents speak Swahili, you're going to speak what? Swahili. It's not that you, that you can't learn or, or you won't learn other languages, but the primary language, the first language, that's what you're going to speak. They're going to have the influence on you, good, bad, or indifferent. But the Bible says that either you're going to serve the gods of your fathers, your influences beyond or in Egypt, or you're going to serve the Lord. But verse 15, he says, but if it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, it's your choice. If you don't want to come into agreement with the way that is plainly made. He says, choose for yourself today whom you will serve. You got to choose one. If you don't choose him, you've chosen. You can't stand in the middle. Either we're going to serve the Lord or you're not. Either you're going to say, look, yeah, yeah, I, I, know, I know he lived. I know that he was a good prophet. Somebody say, you done missed it. He was 100% God. He was 100% man. Come on now. He came born of a virgin. Yeah, he did. He died. Yeah, he did. But they didn't take his life. He laid it down. He looked at the cross despising the shame. But he saw you and I. He says, now, if you in turn take what I did on the cross and you put your faith in my finished works for when he said it is finished. Somebody say 100% done. And you repent of your sins. You ask him to come into your life. Somebody said born again. Baptized into a liquid grave. Come on now. In his name. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Anything that's dead, you what? Bury it. But when it comes up out of the liquid grave, somebody say it's symbolic of the resurrected new life. I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 said that we are what? New creatures. And then there's a process. Old things are passed away. And behold, keep looking. All things have what? Become new. But if it is disagreeable to you in the sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods of, of your fathers which serve beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living in. Somebody say present. But as for me, I love Joshua, makes the statement. See, sometimes we have to make decisions. There's some things that's out of order in our lives, tell the truth. There's some things that's chaotic. Come on, somebody. There's some things that, that we have to find the courage to address. God, by his spirit, has brought it up to our attention, but sometimes we continue to sweep it up under the rug. I don't want no problems. I don't want no arguing. I don't want, come on, I don't want no confusion. I don't want none of that. But look at your neighbor saying, this time you can't be cowardly. Because the God that we serve, not only is he holy, and because he is holy, he is a God of order. You, you felt that right there? You felt, you felt how the flesh felt right there? It almost felt. But, but see, God's order brings about liberation. It sets us free from bondage. But he's a God of order. How can he be anything else when he knows everything? He has all power. He answers to nobody but to the full counsel of himself. Though he has given man dominion in the earth and he has chosen to work with us in the earth after giving us dominion and authority in the earth. Come on, somebody. That he will want to work through a yielded vessel in the earth to conduct his kingdom business in the earth if you and I yield to it. Someone said, you got dominion. God sets something in place and he abides by what he has established. We shouldn't think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. See, we can say, you know what, I don't know if I want to do that. But God's integrity, his character, 
He honors his word. He watches over his word to perform it. He's not separated by his word. He doesn't change when he says a particular thing. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, hey, you can bet your bottom dollar Don Canuyas will say that. I got some people praying already. Yes, Lord. But verse 16 said that the people answered and said, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Somebody say talk is cheap. See, understand that the fear of God is the beginning of what? Somebody say thank God for wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. And if you, don't, if you lack wisdom, ask of God. And he gives to all men what? Liberally. He'll just lavish it. He'll make it rain in other words. Do you want wisdom? Look and say, yeah, I want wisdom. Give me, give, me, give me this insight. Give me this knowledge to know when to apply, when to be quiet, when to speak, when to stand, when to sit, when to rest. Come on, somebody. When to invest, when to sow, when to pluck, when to tear down. When, come on. Give me the wisdom that I need to navigate through this thing called life in these latter days where there's so much wickedness and evil in the land where we're calling wrong, right, and right, wrong. Come on, somebody. We know that we're in our last days. We're almost like frogs that's been put in a, in a pot, and they've been gradually turning up the heat, and we don't know that, that, that we're cooking to death. That now we find ourselves, please help us, church, amen. Please help us. Someone say, please help us. Please help us. Please help us. Sometimes we find ourselves where we go on mute, where we're supposed to have rat, uh, righteous indignation. You know it's wrong. But one or two things, we don't say anything because either we're still there. Somebody say amen. Or someone that's close to us is still there. And we are afraid. If, if it's stepping on my toes, thank you. Amen. God, all of us, people oftentimes liken the church to a hospital. And there are similarities. Because everybody that came through those doors have something. I don't care how long we've been preaching. I don't care how long you've been a member. I don't care how long. Come on. Look at your neighbor. We're all works in progress. But he can take every chain. I don't care how long you've been dealing with it. I don't care if it was 12 years. I don't care if you were like the man by the pool of Bethesda, 38 years, I think. Was it 38 years? Okay, thank you, Lord. Amen. I don't care how long it has been. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to keep calling those things that be not as though they were. I'm going to keep taking whatever the chastisement is. I'm going to keep putting my faith in where it needs to be, and I keep claiming my deliverance. Amen. I am a man of integrity. I am a man that when I read the word of God, hey, I remember. Somebody say testimony. Testimony. The Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. I remember in my early years at the Glorious Church and listening to Bishop teach and things like that. I'm like, how in the world does he see this in the word of God? And I'm still baffled. But, but how in the world does he see this? So when he taught on, you have to call those things that be not as though they were. So I went home. And I began, I read the word. I don't understand it. I don't see it. I said, God, I thank you that I'm able to read the word and it comes to life. That, that I have degrees of understanding. God, I thank you. I'm calling those things. It's not in the present. But I'm calling those things that be not as though they were and they become my reality. Someone say, it's a kingdom principle. If you say that you can't do a thing, you won't do a thing. But if you say Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I understand the context, but catch the principle that I can do all things. If God be for you, who can be against you? If I'm applying the word of God, if I'm seeking him, like Matthew 6 and 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said all these things to be added. Somebody say amen. But to fear God means to take him, somebody say seriously. This is a time where we have to be sober. Somebody say be soberly minded. Be vigilant. Take God seriously rather than having a mere casual relationship with him and trying to keep him, you know, on the outer courts of our lives. I pick you up whenever I'm on that side of town. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's got to be first because he's not going to be second. He loves us right where we are. You can't we can't get ourselves good enough. He says, come, come to me. Come. 
You know, it's interesting to me that that woman, and I always make reference to her, the woman that was caught in the very act that, that when they brought her. Now, they brought her. She didn't come along. They brought her. That's one thing. You know, when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired of something that you can't get yourself out of, come on, somebody, and then you hear the good news preached, and you catch the revelation of the power that he walks with, that he is the power, the absolute and you say, look, I'm taking this to Jesus. You know the man he, who had all the demons legion? When the man dragged him, when Jesus got out the boat, he, he come dragging all those demons to Jesus. And those demons said, look, he, do you come to torment us before our time? The man was able to drag. He brought them. And you saw what happened to them. But that woman was caught. Now, we know that he, you know, he goes on to have an encounter with her. He says, the woman, where are thine accusers? And everybody was gone. He says, is, is there anybody that, that, that condemn you? Nobody's there. He says, okay, neither do I go and sin no more. Now, whether she took heed to that or not, I don't know. But one thing that I know, how consistent he has been with me, that when I have brought to him what I could not do myself, come on, he's been faithful. He gets the glory. He gets all of the credit. Because I've tried to do it by willpower alone. Now, I'm still a work in progress. But I'm talking about my history with him. You know, oftentimes we say this, if you don't like me now, you sure wouldn't have liked me then. Who said that? How you like me now? I'm trying to see who. Oh, cool moldy. Okay. <laughs> Yes, Lord. Someone say, thank God for the process. Sanctification is real. Hmm. But the people were to get rid of, someone said, the gods of their fathers, that their fathers had worshipped. You say, well, you know, we're not, we're not worshipping any little dolls and, and idols and things like that. Someone say, are you sure? This is, a likely, this is likely a reference to the false gods mentioned in the Old Testament story, but an idol isn't merely a statue before which someone bows. An idol is an unauthorized person, place, or thing. Somebody say unauthor unauthorized. Person, hear these nouns, place, or thing that looks, that a person looks to as a source of purpose, promise, or provision. Someone said person, place, or thing. I called Deacon Hopkins, and I wanted to do a visual aid, but I couldn't quite get it. But I think you all can get it. Uh, but, but we all have air filters, and we have a responsibility to change our air filters. If we don't change our air filters, or when you go to change it, when you open up that vent, You'll see that the air filter is clogged up with a lot of dust and debris. And we need to be responsible in chasing it, uh, changing it because if we don't, it will cause, as Deacon Hopkins told me, it will cause the unit to work harder than it has to. And if it goes on for an extreme time period, it can do damage that will, of course, be really, really expensive in the long run. Like those air filters, there are things, he says, that let us therefore cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. See, as life goes on, we pick up debris. We pick up negativity. We hear music. We see TV programmers. We watch the news, anxiety, all types of things. But God's word said, look, you need to change your air filter. How do you, how, how's it says? Somebody said, cast all your cares upon him for he care for you. Come on. Somebody said, change your air filter. If not, you're going to have to work harder. And when you find yourself working harder, we find ourselves as believers moving in carnality. We're trying to perform instead of allowing the spirit. He says, it's, it's not by, not by, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So if it's not by his spirit, how's he going to get the glory? Who wants the Lord to get the glory in your story? There's no author. Like him. He knows how to write a story, amen, that, that not only is it a comeback story for you and everyone that looks to you can see God through your experience because sometimes those experiences might be a cave experience. Sometimes that 
that experience might be a valid type of experience. Sometimes that experience might be shameful. It might be humiliating. It might be however. Somebody said persecution is real. But, 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 but when you hold on to him, somebody say hold on to him. Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I know it's going rough right now. Higgin, there's some things that you're working out of me. And there's some questions now that I'm asking you. But I know that my ladder and you, if I hold on to my faith, if I keep trusting in you, not only am I coming out, but there are going to be those that's going to come out with me. And God is going to be glorified. Somebody say amen. amen. We have only one ultimate source. To meet our needs. Somebody said that's God. Joshua having a kingdom mindset because he was a kingdom man. He couldn't control the hearts of the people of Israel. But he knew whose agenda he himself would follow and would lead his own home. Somebody said it starts at your home. Who really wants to know? You want to know your purpose. You know, there was a popular book that came out. I forgot the pastor, Saddleback Church, uh, The Purpose Driven Life. Good book. Good book. And purpose is a, it's a buzzword now. I, I, want, I want to know my purpose. I want to know my purpose. Yeah. Because I know I'm not a mistake. I'm not an accident. And God is not trying to figure out what he wants to do with me. I was just moving up on a, a, a season of, of being deceived that I was what the world said I was. Someone say Deception. I told, I'm trying to tell you, you're not mook mook. You're not pookie and you're not boo boo. <laughs> yes, Lord. See, some of us, we, we got nicknames for something that we did or did not do, and then we started to download false information, and our behavior started to line up with the false information, and next thing you know, we're sitting behind bars, possibly, with all this talent and ability, only to find Christ, amen, behind the bars, amen, do ministry in the bars, get out of the, get out of the bars, come out and do kingdom work. Can somebody say amen? The story is not over. I don't care how you start, but your finishing God is always better. Yeah, you ain't less than nobody else. We all going to take a shower this evening. Amen. But as I said, Joshua, being the kingdom man that he was, he, he could only control, he could not control Israel's hearts, but, but he took only over, ownership over his household. He says, but as for me and my house, this is what's going to happen. We're going to serve the Lord. I believe in this time where kids are divorcing their children. I mean, kids are divorcing their parents. For real. And we don't see nothing. You can't tell me that we're not in the last days where, when mama had company over. I told you. When my mama's company came over, I said, I almost hated to see my mama's friends come over because I knew what it was. Because you, you weren't going to be sitting in there while grown folk were talking. Either you go back there in your room or you go outside and play. I don't care if it's Saturday morning, it's cartoon Sunday. But now, children come in there while you're watching TV and turn the channel. I heard somebody say, spare the rod. Let me give you some Bible. <laughs> somebody said, but ask for me in my house. We're going to serve the Lord. There has to be, somebody say, devotional, devotional time. I know they don't want to come to the table. But take time. Maybe their intention span ain't 20 minutes. Do it 10 minutes. Build from there. I guarantee you questions are going to start coming back to that table. When we set things in place, somebody say prayer time. I love when I talk to, to Elder Cross and before he goes to work, one morning I was talking to him and he said, look, I'll call you right back. I got to get my wife and, and pray before I go. Come on, y'all. You say, well, look, I'm not in a marital covenant. 
But have your place. That's all right. Someone said, I'm whole. I'm one. I'm whole. I'm not fragmented or broken or anything like that. Someone said, lose that type of thinking. I am, I am complete in him. And if it's in his plans for me to have a marital, so be it. Amen. But, but when I come into that season, I know how to handle it. I won't make it an idol. Can somebody say, somebody say person, place, or thing? You know, we say as leaders, because the scripture says, follow me as I follow Christ. How much more then? Look, I don't, I don't want my wife to make an idol out of me. Trust me, she ain't. And let me tell you the truth, the same thing there. Come on now. Now, now you get totally left and you keep going left. Amen. He can the grace. I'm going to love you. Amen. But I'm going to keep looking to the hills. I know she's going to do the same thing. Can somebody say amen? amen? Who wants to be in order? Somebody say God first. But since I'm there, let me just mend that a little bit. Let me do a little bit. But as she's working on her own individual relationship, and I'm working on my own individual relationship, I'm finding out what I'm supposed to do as a husband. Husbands, dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Somebody say the good, the bad, and the ugly. When we miss the mark, he says, uh, confess your faults one to another. Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Someone say the good, the bad, and the ugly. Someone say love can hit all three of them. Sometimes. Because you're dealing with a human being, someone who needed Jesus, just like the way you knew, needed Jesus. And meanwhile, she's working on her own relationship because God has placed her here as a daughter. Someone said he did make them sons and daughters. I know that we're trying to blur the line, but he made them sons and daughters. He made them male and female. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together if you're happy and you know it. Well, I'm going to another message, but over here, I'm going to lead out and along for a little bit. But look at your neighbor and say, whatever God has ordered, that's what I want. I'm almost finished. But I remember uh, about three weeks ago, I said that uh, at my mama's table, at my grandma's table, at any elder's table, uh, back in the days coming up, I never got to the table. I, you know, I saw glasses, silverware, sometimes paper towels or some type of napkin or whatever. We saw the food. We saw the, the spread over the food. So... So bugs or flies couldn't get in it or anything like that. We saw serving utensils. We saw those types of things. And, of course, we watched that before we got to the table. But one thing that I didn't see was a menu at the table. And just like it was naturally there, see, because back in the days, you ate what was on your plate. You ate what they wanted. Or if you didn't eat, you went to sleep with your face all in your And you're going to sit right there and teach. <laughs> How much more? He knows what's best for you and I. And when he orders a thing, help me, Lord, to come into compliance more swiftly. Help me to be able to buffet my body, not my will, but, but your will be done. I don't see why you're doing it this way. I don't understand it. But I'm going to trust you. And God says, blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. What do I need to trust? I need to trust the promises of God. How do I, I know the promises of God? One, I study the word of God myself. He says, study to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Two, you find yourself in a local assembly. He says, look, I give you pastors after my own heart. Then there are graces in that local assembly that will help uh, develop and cultivate your gift, your talent, and we work together collectively to be about our Father's business in the name of the Lord Jesus, the Christ. Can somebody say amen? amen. That's how we find it. And then as we study the word, we hear promise. And then we say amen. It bears witness. There's agreement in the earth. Amen. It is so. Now I began to, to, to call those things because the Bible says that what? Faith comes by hearing and hearing how? By the word of God. When I hear that promise, I say amen. That's for me. When you walk into the grocery store, you walk down here, you might be walking down food line and you say, okay, uh, uh, oh, okay, oh, that's buy two, get one free, amen. What do you do? You put it in your basket, that's for me. You walk down the other aisle, amen, you, you'll find, he go, uh, uh, 
Oh, man, that's a clearance sale. 70% amen. That's for me. The same thing takes place, somebody say spiritually, when I hear the word of God, when he says healing, amen. When he says peace, he says be anxious for nothing. No, I, I, I take the authority that he's been giving me, somebody say we bind, we cast out, we loose, we exercise the authority that we have. But if you don't know that you have the authority, then there's a draft somewhere in the house. And if there's a draft in the house, what do you do? What is mama going to send you to do? Go find out. Hey, there's a window open. There's a draft somewhere. If you got to put a blanket to the door, if you got to put plastic to the window with duct tape all the way around it, y'all know how it is. Because in the long run, it's going to cost you what? Money and discomfort. Someone said, I'm going to trust him. But he called the Israelites to make the same crucial, some might say, decision. As I said earlier, when they began to talk about initially in verses 16 through 18, they began just to talk to talk. But Joshua comes back and said, look, he ain't going to forgive you. He ain't going to do this. He ain't, he's not going to do that. Why? Because he knew that they were just giving lip, lip service. They were just talking. Yeah, we're going to serve him. But talk is cheap, but actions prove our words. Some say talk is cheap. We can talk it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. God, if you do this for me. Oh, nobody had that. That was just me. If you just get me out of this, just, just. God, I thank you. But the warning that God is a jealous God gives insight into the Lord's character. God is righteously jealous for his people. Somebody say, he's jealous over you. Just as a husband would be, be righteously jealous over his wife if she was acting inappropriate he, with, with another man. What you, what you skinning and grinning all up in here? She'd do the same thing. Look, I know good way you didn't open the door for her and you didn't open the door for Can somebody say amen? And if it's her sister... Don't have to be blood, sister. I know good way you didn't open the door for me. You didn't. And if he your brother. See, I'm meddling too much now. Let me keep moving, y'all. Okay, keep going. So it says, God is righteously jealous. But, but if the people were to fail in this pledge of fidelity, their own words will call down a curse on them and justify the judgment of God. He put a rock there to remind them of what you all agreed to say, God, I'm going to serve you. Someone said, thank God for realignment. Who's seen the movie um, The Woman King? Good movie. Good movie. Good movie. I'm not going to tell nothing. But some of y'all are like, I saw it. But I just want you to see the part of the movie where the girl's arm was broken. I'll leave it there. Sometimes we find ourselves in broken places. And I need help outside of myself to remind me of who I am, what my assignment is, and the ability that I have, my responsibility. And it might be painful for, for, for the realignment. You got to see the movie. We have to be there one for another. That when I see you in a broken place, hold on, uh-uh. Get off her. Come on. Can I give one more snippet? And I'm almost finished. Somebody say testimony. I don't glory in yesterday. I'm so glad that I'm the person that, that I'm becoming today. I wish I would have been this person before, but I thank God that he's long-suffering, patient, and kind. But I remember in my unregenerated life how I functioned in the groups that I ran with. 
even I was in the group that I was with good, good guys, but we looked out for each other. But I always had something that was in me that if I saw someone being bullied, and I think this is national bully, is that it? October Prevention Month. But if I saw someone being mishandled, I couldn't, I could not not do anything. It, it was just innate. I don't know where it come from. I don't, I don't care if the odds look different. It's just something that would click, a switch that would go on. Hey, look, stop that. It could have been outnumbered. It doesn't matter. But something would click in. Just like it was then in the natural, so it should be in the spirit with us. When we, have, when we see our brother that's overtaken, someone said this, this warfare is spiritual. When we have our brother that's overtaken in the fall, ye which are spiritual will store such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself. Sometimes you need to jump in. You jumping in spiritually might be turning your plate down. You jumping in might be, come on, y'all let us put our hands together, amen, for, for, for the opportunities that God give us to give, to be there one for another, locally as well as abroad. I want to say this, uh, I want to say this, for the effort last week that Elder Spain, you was able to take some of those things down, give God the glory, but let's give your brother or your sister a hand clap for their obedience in and donating and sharing to that effort. Somebody say, to the glory of God. But there would be other opportunities. You might be the one. He says, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. But if you have put, in, if you have put seed in the ground, if you have considered your brother, your sister, and that hour, trust me, your family's going to be there. Someone said, we circle the wagon spiritually. Because we're stronger. Someone say stronger together. But my point was simply this. Somebody say, you, you have a choice. Many people ask God why he's not working in their circumstances. Sometimes God is not working in our circumstances because we, either we have unrepented of sin, unconfessed sin. Some say, repent, some say daily. God, I missed it. I missed it today. God desires truth on the inward part. There's no deliverance in lies. If I'm in denial myself, and sometimes we have blind spots. You know what a blind spot is, right? It's an area whereby you can't see possible damage, or danger, or threat. Sometimes we have behaviors that we don't know. Sometimes we might be, I thank God the apostle is here. But sometimes we might be, what, narcissistic. You put something out there that was really good the other week, too. Sometimes we might be so self-absorbed that we don't even see our blind spots. And then God raised up somebody to come to us and share with us, hey, look, you might want to correct this. And then if we're not careful, if, if pride is there, pride, I say, look, who are you talking to? And what does the Bible say about pride? Pride comes before? Someone said, let us move in humility because God has promised in his word he will exalt the humble. Someone say, hey, amen. For real, I'm about to sit down. Then they, then they don't stop considering that God's inactivity may be a result of the fact that they, like many in Israel, they, don't, they aren't willing to discard their idols. Someone say, I don't want no idols. Person, place, or thing. God is my source. Amen. Come on, y'all. Somebody say, God is my source. He's going to help me in every area of my life, my finances, my family, my fellowship, even my recreational fun. Amen. Somebody say, yeah, we can have fun. Amen. He, 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 every area of your life, he's concerned. He's, he has commanded every molecule and every cell of your body to do a particular thing in its obedience. And wherever there's rebellion, every cancer cell, we bind it up right now in the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? amen. Every rebellious cell in Jesus' name. Look at your neighbor and say, you got a choice. But let your choice be, somebody say, in God. Come on, put your hands together for the word of God, for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Don't call 
wrong right. You might have an area where, where you're wrong. Someone say, God, I agree with you. I'm wrong, but I need help. I believe that you have the power to deliver me. I believe that it is your will to deliver me. Be it be instantaneous or progressive, but I'm going to do what you tell me to do. But first of all, I need for you to come into my life. I want to admit that I am a sinner. I agree with you. But I also, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. I believe that he died. I believe that he rose. And I ask him to come into my life. And I will confess him as Lord of my life. I want all of us to bow our heads and we're going to pray into those that's on the camera this morning. I want you to repeat after me if you do not know Jesus Christ and you have not accepted him. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me for all of my sins. I want you to govern my life by your spirit. I believe that your blood was powerful, pure enough, and potent enough to pay my sin debt. Past, present, and future. I want to be baptized in your name. I want to be full of your spirit. And I want to live this victorious life that I might have eternal life starting today. If you prayed that prayer, lift your hands in the sanctuary. And if you're online, there should be some information on the screen. Give us a call so an elder will lead you in the plan of salvation. And we got some pertinent information we want to get to you. Is there someone up under the sound of my voice in this sanctuary? And we thank God for every space. You said, Pastor Davis, I prayed that prayer. And I've asked Jesus to come into my life. Is there one? Is there someone in here you say, well, Pastor Davis, I have another need. I have an area that I want you to touch and agree with me in faith. I want you to lift your hands. We see those hands. We see those hands. We see those hands. Thirdly, you want to intercede for, for a loved one family, friend, or even foe, lift your hands. Put it on the table of your heart. Put the person, put your situation. And I'm going to say on the count of three, I need to hear, better yet, he needs to hear, say, I believe. One, two, three. I believe. What you're about to ask for. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, you see the circumstances in the situation. You already knew what it was before we even asked. And you said that you're going to exceed even what we ask. And God, I thank you for doing it right now for your glory. Now, you can entrust us that as we move in the done of you, as you answer these prayers, as we walk into the due season of these answer prayers, that we would give you the glory, that we would give you the credit, that we will be bold in saying that, that you have done it. We thank you for saving our households as we come to order. We thank you, O oh God, for pulling us out of enticements, appetites, and desires. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We come against every de debilitating thing that works against us psychologically, emotionally, and physically. You be glorified, God. And we move by faith and not by sight. And we will call those things that be not as though they were. It is in Jesus' name we all say amen. Come on, put your hands together. Somebody say choose wisely. Amen. We thank you so much. But it's offering time in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. We... We celebrate this is another opportunity to be able to, to acknowledge the goodness of the Lord. He gives us increase. And he has instituted the time that there might be meeting in this house. And we acknowledge that he is the giver. And we can't give except it be given to us. And he has entrusted us with the increase on our lives. We thank God and we believe this to be good soil to continue to finish works of Jesus Christ in the earth.
to those that's online, that's watching now, and to those that will watch later, we thank you for trusting God and trusting this area of the vineyard to sow your seed in, that we would continue to be led by the Spirit of God uh, to do the work of the ministry. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. We do ask if you would please write legibly so that we can record properly and accurately. Amen. As I alluded to earlier in the teaching this morning, it's about a heart thing. Amen. It's a heart thing. Don't feel uh, guilted or uh, anything like that. If your heart is not in the place right now, I will say go pray. Let God get your heart right and you come back because he wants us to do it. Somebody say cheerfully, not grudgingly, not out of necessity or anything like that, but, but we acknowledge him with a cheerful heart, with a trusting heart. Amen. To those that's going to be given uh, by, uh, by card, uh, you can give in the back. But at this time, let us lift, uh, I'm sorry, I left, it, I left my offering on the inside. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Are we ready to give? Let us pray. Father, we thank you, O God, for giving us seed to sow. We thank you, O God, for giving us soil to sow it into. And God, we thank you, O God, for everything that you have promised concerning the tithe being released over our lives as we give uh, by the levels that you have made clear to us. We, we give cheerfully and we thank you, O God, that we move up under open heavens and that you have opened up a window and poured us out a blessing that, that we don't have room enough to receive. We thank you for rebuking the devour for our behalf. And, O God, we thank you just for being God in our lives. God, we love you. We know that we can't pay you back. But we do acknowledge you in our giving. It is in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. We're in the hands of our deacon. Put your hands together for what the Lord has done, what he is doing, and what he has done. 